present QueerMusicals.com podcast. Welcome to Represent, the QueerMusicals.com podcast. And today I'm joined by Liam McAvoy and Joe Foster from Legally Blonde. And I will get them to uh, introduce themselves first. So uh, Liam, do you want to go first? Yes. Hello, I'm Liam. Um, I'm 23 and I'm from Dublin. And yeah, I was in Legally Blonde. Hooray! Yay! And Joe? I'm Jo, um, I'm 23, just turned, and I was also in Legally Blonde. Also, my pronouns are they, them. My pronouns are he, they. Gorgeous. Amazing. Excellent. Thank you. And actually, now you've just said you've just turned 23. Yeah. Is it right that both of you have the same birthday, exactly the same birthday? That is correct. An hour apart. 22nd of June, 1999, baby. Nice. Wow. What a special day. Yeah. Oh, my God, it really was. Yeah. Was all the cast decked out the dressing rooms. It was... Yeah. We loved them. Oh, amazing. So nice. So lovely. Excellent. So um, you've just finished with Legally Blonde and you both had some very special roles in Legally Blonde. Um, uh, Do you want to tell us a little bit about the roles that you played? Yes. So I actually originated the role. (laughs) (laughs) No, I was the first human to play the role of Bruiser Woods, which is Elle's dog. Um, Obviously, at first it was very scary because it's never been done before. Um, But yeah, I had the best time. I literally just love the character um and then i was also in the ensemble for a few bits in act two but i was mostly bruiser which yes. i loved it was it was a very beautiful performance oh, if anyone didn't you. see it it was very <laughs> lovely and and joe you you had a multitude of roles yeah. uh, what, what did you play mine was probably a bit less iconic but still no so bad, no, so no. Uh, no no i'm joking um do I have to name them all? No, you don't, you don't have to name them all. <laughs> okay. We'll be here all day. I know, God. Really <laughs> well, Winthrop. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron Y. I did Carlos. Hmm. I was Rufus. Yeah, was lover, my lover. Which was really fun to play with, definitely. It was really lovely. But yeah, because yeah. that wasn't really a storyline in the original. That wasn't at all. No, they, they've created. I love that they created gay dogs. Oh, yeah. It was God, just really. the most perfect it's thing. Camp. Speaking to Lucy Moss, and she was like, if anything, I have to get gay dogs in the show. yeah i have to yeah like it just makes sense for the dogs to be gay like absolutely and i suppose i mean not wanting to taint every poodle with <laughs> with this uh-huh. but it does feel like the, um, the particular type of dogs lent themselves quite well to those sort of i mean you played bruiser was very camp wasn't he very very camp mm. i think that's just who he is though like if you think of l l woods is so camp like yeah. she yes. is as well. yeah like and even in the movie and everything it's just like it's just camp and like fun and pink and and it just makes sense that bruiser is the same yeah, yeah. absolutely and what bruiser doesn't have any lines either which is no. well he does he does he has some woofs oh yeah i did bark <laughs> yeah I did debut my bark but <laughs> it's interesting playing a character and kind of developing a character um that's completely almost completely non-verbal yeah it was a lot of it was based on reactions mm. um I, especially my auditions it was like more so the reactions to what people were saying body language face like facial expressions and stuff so yeah it was difficult because obviously you kind of bounce off dialogue sometimes mm. but yeah it was really fun there were some lovely moments between you and joe as well yeah, when you uh, yeah. when when rufus was unveiled definitely yeah that was really fun creating yeah i think there was many a times in rehearsals where lucy was like let's rein it back a little bit yeah because <laughs> we were just honestly it was definitely a process it was such yeah. a process and i think that was the really fun like finding all like the little nuances and mm. finding the bits in the text where we could actually go and make it ping a bit which was really yeah. exciting i think the hardest part was not like taking the attention too much like because obviously it is quite easy to take the mm, attention we're dressed as dogs like we're obviously going to mm. stand out as it is yeah. but we didn't want to take away from the actual plot of the story definitely. so we had to find places in the script where it was suitable to like do that over the top kind of Completely. yeah yeah i was i was one of the things i was thinking was that i must have had to be really clearly timed to make sure that when you were drawing the audience that you could draw the audience at a time that it wasn't going to miss anything else yeah, yeah. Um, especially with Elle's story because like that's the whole story of legally blonde if you miss anything about her story then you're lost so mm. 
But I totally would have watched a musical that was just about Bruiser and um, Rupert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, what, did, what did Lucy say to you? She was like, yeah. about Bruiser. She's like, it's Bruiser's world oh, and we're all living in it. Is, it was actually, <laughs> like, I was in Legally Bruiser. I was not in Legally <laughs> Blonde. <laughs> and that is truly where I went with my character. Yeah. I loved some of the little bits as well, like when um, Elle was reading the human rights book that Bruiser was sitting there with an animal rights. Oh, yeah. But there was some, I mean, oh, I yeah. wish I'd had time to see it more. I saw it twice. Oh, fab. I wish oh. I'd seen it more than that because just to catch all of those like really yeah. little things that were going on. Yeah, we had loads of little bits like mm. added in. and Yeah, it was so fun. So I was thinking about, because when Legally Blonde first came out, which was, it must be 15 years ago, something like that, which I did see, um, I remember feeling like a little bit uncomfortable about the gay or European song, mm -hmm. just because it felt like that was the only moment that there was any mention of gay people. And it felt like, mm, are we being the butt of a joke here? Definitely. And it was so, I, one of the things that I really loved about this was that not only was there Bruiser and uh, Rufus, but there was also when you had that, the picnic scene early on, when the proposal scene, that there was a couple of same-sex couples there. Yeah. That was really important. Yeah. And, um, and then Gail European, I feel, like, I feel like it hits a little bit better now. I don't know. How do you feel about that number? Well, I think... What it is, when you've got something like that, I feel like you really do have to pave the way for it. And I mm. feel like, like you said, in the picnic scenes, from day dot, we are setting the scene and the space that we're in. Yeah. And I think that makes a lot of the audience feel a lot less... Um, it just makes them feel more comfortable. Yeah. Because you're watching it and you're like, oh, I know where we are now. Yeah. So when you're in this world, when you come to that world and that happens, you're kind of not laughing at it, you're kind of laughing with it. And I think that was a lot of stuff that we had to work on was like actually including the audience a lot more yeah, and actually inviting them into it, which I think, and also going from it from a more fun outlook, mm. not so much like the, we had to really work on like not making it so aggressive and so, you know, like we are literally pointing this person yeah. out and making and yeah. actually outing their sexuality, which is obviously not, not how it should be done. But yeah, it was, I really enjoyed it. And then I never realised, but actually when we, me and Luca kissed. Yeah. So at first I was like, I think it would be nice if we just had a little boogie and mm. went off. But then Lucy, we had like an intimacy workshop yeah. with Luca. And I was really shocked because I didn't realise we would, um, I wondered what we would be doing. And she said, I really want you to kiss. Yeah. And I was like, oh really? I, like, I, I don't really think it needs that. What do you think? And she was like, see, I really think it does in the sense of like, I just think it'd be so lovely that you are so happy together and like you just have this gorgeous mm -hmm. moment because there are so many moments in the show where you have like a lot of um, kissing with, between like a heterosexual yeah. heterosexual couple and Lucy was like, I want more of that. Like, I really mm. want to bring that yeah, out. Yeah, because Elle gets to kiss Warner and then she kisses Emmett. Like, exactly. Yeah. And she was like, I want just the same amount. Mm. Like, we want to give the queers what they want and what they need. And so I think you know, it kind of warmed it up a little and I didn't even realise, but they have the pride flag literally shoots up when yeah. we're kissing. So Yeah, and the light, yeah. And like, I always wondered why the audience was kissing so much. I just thought, they just love my kissing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, but the, the, obviously the pride flag shoots up and I think it is actually a really special moment mm -hmm. now. It is, And I really yeah. like what we did with it. I mean, mm. I say, if I say so myself, but... Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I have to say, Joe, that that was one of the things that, I really loved about the way you set that number was mm. that um thank you. yeah and and yeah and thank you for doing it as well because I feel like it's still for actors it still can be quite a difficult kind of thing to do um I don't know whether it's specifically when it's I, th I guess it's probably awkward whether you're doing you know with somebody of the same gender or different genders um but I think I feel like particularly for that, I I really appreciated that, and I know that a lot of the other people in the audience really mm. appreciated that as well. Definitely. I mean, I keep mentioning Lucy, but I think because it was probably it was just so collaborative. Yeah. That she made sure we all put our input into it, mm. brought our own, own experiences, and she even said from day dot, she was like, I did not want to accept the show because of this moment in the show. Mm. Like I thought it was a really difficult moment. I feel like she won't mind me saying that, but yeah. um, actually. I think it turned out okay, actually. And I think like, having someone like Joe, who's authentically queer, playing yeah. that part as Carlos, it yeah. just, mm. it makes sense. Instead and of the stereotypical, yeah. you know. Like, yeah. Joe wasn't putting on this, like, f fake queer facade to yeah. be like, yeah. like, you're just being yourself, so it, it wasn't, like, in a 
weird mean kind of way Definitely. it's just more natural and it, it's same for luca obviously yeah luca is um straight and we had loads of talks about that how he was going to go about it yeah. naturally i don't think he ever went too far i think we just made sure actually if we're we play the truth of it mm. and you know we are just ourselves and we don't have to do this over topness no. obviously you know it's yeah. camp and theatrical but yeah i think yeah it was lovely yeah it turned out okay yeah, I, I'm. I'm really. I'm really glad to hear that there was an intimacy coach involved as well, because that's quite unusual for theatre. Oh yeah, we had one for Bruce and Rufus. Oh God, did you? Yeah. yeah for the oh, kids. amazing. Yeah, yeah, we had about forty-five minutes. Yeah, we were a bit nervous like, at first because we didn't realise what it would be. Obviously, we knew we were going to. We knew we were going to kiss. We were. We got told oh, yeah, we there did. could be yeah. a kiss, but then we didn't know like how that would work yeah and obviously with dogs there's it's a very different yeah. sort of language to perhaps yeah. they don't you know they, they perhaps don't have the same sort of um like we must go on a date first yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, i think as well that we, we wanted it to read well because the costumes and stuff mm. like we just didn't want it to get lost so we workshopped it a lot we did yeah it's fun though it was so fun. so fun we, yeah like we, I think <laughs> we, we just were kissed so much in that rehearsal <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fun but it was. I mean, it is going to be an iconic um, production of Legally Blonde. I, I can't. I mean, I know that. I feel like there's another production that's going along similar lines, maybe in the US at the moment. There is. I mm. noticed that. Oh my God, is there? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how you know the casting is for that. Because for me, I, I feel like from being in it, but also I just don't see like how you could ever go back to the original. Now. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, there might it might be a case in like couple of years but it's just like i don't understand i feel like it just makes so much more sense yeah I mean? definitely i mean particularly we took i i had um uh elanda moore and Tariq jarrett who happened to oh, be cool. in the audience on the day that i saw it <laughs> and they came and sat next to me and that's how I, they managed to get on my podcast right, i mean say yeah. they managed to get on my podcast it was more i managed to get them <laughs> on my podcast i think is more to the point but yeah. we were talking especially about the, the fact that um emmett being played uh, by a black actor completely. completely changes that role and actually I, I i remember thinking when it was first on legally blonde was first and i was thinking well what is why has Emmett got a chip on his shoulder? Because to me, he seems like a, you know, yeah. a middle class straight white man. Yeah. And so it reads very, very differently in the same way that it reads very differently having Courtney playing Elle as well. And yeah. um, it was, yeah, it's, I'm so happy that um, you managed to kind of, you know, reinvent that production. I mean, I, I love Legally Blonde anyway, but I particularly loved it in this version. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to mm -hmm. ask you um, about the, um, the skipping rope Oh, oh, you didn't watch. You didn't watch when we messed up, did you? No, I didn't watch when you messed up. Oh, god, <laughs> was only about five times yeah. in the whole run. No, it actually was. We were amazing. We mm. were. We give ourselves a pat on yeah. the back for that. Because how many weeks did we do it? Oh my god, what the show? Seven weeks. Seven weeks, and I think we messed up the big skipping rope about five times. Yeah, which is and we always got back good. into it, so yeah. it was, not, it was never a disaster. Yeah, it was never a disaster. <laughs> the contingency yeah. was not coming through yeah. we said absolutely no but yeah it was we did well i think yeah but that was one one of the things i guess from that was thinking about stereotypically how that would have been managed mm -hmm. yeah. in that it would not usually if you looked at your company it would not usually have been you two that no. somebody would have gone let's get these two to do the skipping rope yeah and i loved that it, it was you so two that sense. did it that's actually so true though because when we got into rehearsals and we like went into our first rehearsal for whipped into shape hmm. and obviously we got told that we were doing that that didn't even cross my mind. I just it just made so much sense to me that it was going to be me and Joe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I just like I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Literally, even speaking to costume, we were yeah. like, so what are we thinking? Um, leggings, yeah. And crop top. <laughs> like, immediately, we we're like, it has to be. Like, why would it not? Mm. Like, and I just think it it just ended up working really well with Lauren. Like, we just had such a good like little working relationship, like the mm -hmm. three of us. And I think we look good together on stage yeah. as well. Yeah. So it was so fun. I mean that whole that whole um, section, the whole choreography for that. You know, oh. When you were individual, when you were doing the big skipping rope, mm -hmm. it was just it's crazy. Ah, uh, it was it's one of the most breathtaking things I've ever seen. Yeah. I think so probably one of the scariest numbers. But then mm. also like once you're on there, you don't have time to be scared, so you mm. just 
like enjoy yeah. it and then when it's over you're like oh my god i can't believe we've done it Every again <laughs> i did it i was like wow yeah wow literally Thank also god. shout out to our dance captain paolo we love you yeah mm. paolo. literally oh, what a saint gosh. well i think i must have seen paolo must have done it the day that you weren't there yes. joe which yes. i mean for that oh. to, to be actually able to do that number with a swing know. you know or somebody stepping into also, that role Bianca is amazing as well. yeah. Bianca, oh, yeah. who, she was first cover brook um for her to go on oh wow and do that whole number yeah not mess up once mm. and like she like obviously like uh, what lauren does every night was amazing but yeah. lauren did it every day mm. so once you get into routine like it's like for me and joe with the big rope we got into a routine but for bianca to go on there and just do it once Unreal. out of the blue like, like it was yeah. crazy the swings on that show yes honestly, yeah swings in general like i mm. do not yeah know. Our four swings carried that show. Like Honestly, they're amazing. We couldn't have done it without them. Yeah, they're yeah. Just all amazing. Shakira, Ash. Yeah. Brilliant. Yes, yeah, so I think I saw Sh- Shakira must have been playing um, the Clark. I think the day that I saw <laughs> yeah. it, the, the two days I saw it, which is uh, one of my favourite moments in the. Uh, in the musical, which I won't spoil for everybody, but it's the moment where the clerk has to read back the. Um... Yes, <laughs> everyone loves that court stenographer. Yeah, we love we love Sha- Shakira's court stenographer, especially. It's mm. funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, it's. I, I'm really glad that you had th- that moment as well as as well as being the iconic dogs, as well yeah. as you know the other roles, and you you had loads of other kind of featured solo yeah. roles um, as well there, Joe. But I particularly loved that you had that moment and yeah. that scene. It well, was we, really we fun. We used to notice when we came out, like the star whipped into shape. We'd always notice the audience were like you whispering and chatting to each other. Yeah, and then we realised after about a week or two, they were like oh that's the dogs like yeah. that they were literally like is that bruiser because that's the mm. first time i would be yes. on stage not as bruiser Definitely. and obviously you can't see like our hair or anything when mm. you're in the dog costume and stuff so no. yeah kept getting us mixed up as well. uh, we i was talking to ali about that ali and isaac and they were like why do people get keep well, i don't know why we kept mixing them up because they do not look the same oh my god <laughs> the cast are the worst <laughs> yeah, the cast, literally getting our costumes put on different rails yeah like where's my shoe oh it's in liam's yeah <laughs> I mean, we were beside each other for every, every number we were in. We were together. Opposite. We were beside each other, opposite each other. Born on the same day, sat beside each other in the dressing room. Yeah. These things happen. It's spooky. Literally, these things happen. Oh, I don't know about that, literally. But yeah, it was cool. It was so fun. I had yeah. so much fun. Even, even like my name being Dana and, you know, that was in the original. And we never changed it because it hmm. just makes sense. Like, I just, yeah. There just doesn't need to be. And I gave such. myself a character name, Lisa. Lisa, 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 giving it up for broke, but yeah, yeah, it was like it just doesn't need that, and it's. Yeah, I find it so bizarre now that someone could look at that and go, "Well, it has to be a, you know, a woman," and it's like, uh, why? Mm. Like, literally, why? You know, you create the stardust comes from like when you're not, like when yeah. you're bringing something new and different, mm. like. There's no point repeating stuff. Every everyone will bring something different. The yeah. other ones would be the same. So like, yeah. how exciting is that that you could have something just? I just I don't understand why a creative wouldn't look at that and go right. That's cool. Let's give that some. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's just so cool. Shout out to Enid Hoops. Yeah. How cool Ooh, is that? Oh yeah, yeah. so cool. Our lovely owls, they're amazing. Yeah. yeah. Literally, when you think about school. it, it's just like iconic. It makes it just makes sense. Yeah, it really mm. does. I think that's one of the one of the great things that's starting to happen now is that people are recognizing um that um actors can bring something completely different to characters it's not that the character has to be played in the same way every time yeah it is important and it's one of the reasons why you know those of us who are theater fans love swings love seeing our understudies yeah you know because it's different it just changes things every every time yeah if you're interested in lgbtq plus representation in musical theater Check out our website, www.queermusicals.com, for lots more information about musicals with LGBTQ plus characters. I was going to talk to you a little bit about the idea of, I mean, we've already covered this quite a bit, but the idea of it being a queer space or a space that is open to queer people. And I wondered if that's that's something, I mean, perhaps, and Liam, I know it's maybe only your second or third job out of training. Yeah. Maybe compared to training or compared to other productions that you've done. Yeah. Um, I think I went into it just thinking it would be your average job, mm. normal, like 
obviously I'd seen the casting and stuff, but I didn't know anyone before I started the job. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is, makes so much difference having the queer space, like queer people, working with queer people, like having like openly queer conversations. Mm. Um, and it does make you realise how much you're kind of like deprived of that yeah. at college and like yeah. in other jobs and yeah it opens your eyes and to how important it actually is and how helpful it is i've literally learned so much about myself and yeah it was amazing that's great what about you joe how did you how did you find it yeah i mean obviously going from rent yes and then to legally i think i hadn't again been in that space and then once i was in that you know you just have conversations and when you put a group of minorities together mm. instantly everyone is there for everyone and everyone listens i think it's really interesting how we all listen to each other and if anybody had a problem we would always always address it yeah. and we would bring it up to whoever it, it had to be brought up to and we just talk about it like there was never any bad blood between anyone everyone genuinely just cared which I think was so just so special and you really don't get that a lot. And I think that's why it's so important, especially if you are putting on a queer production, that you also have the creative team who listen to that. Yeah. And um and bring that because if it's not if that isn't then met, sometimes, you know, I guess you're there's this imbalance. I was going to mention Rent a little bit. I mean, I was lucky because I saw the video, the video, that makes it sound like it's from the 1980s. <laughs> I saw the recorded version and then I saw it live with yeah. um, with the, because the, they had, they slightly recast it. Um, and so I saw you in the ensemble, Joe. I think yeah. I actually might have seen you in the ensemble the first day that you changed track because oh, it's the wow. first time that Isaac was on as Angel. Yeah, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, so you saw the day we switched. That's yeah. Cool. And it was, it's another show that really has that sort of, it, I, was, I said this on another podcast, but it really changes the way you see Rent when the ensemble are queer. Mm -hmm. Because so often you feel like Rent is in this, it's in this artist's community, but unless the artist community is queer, I don't know, the story never made any sense to me. And then suddenly having all of these wonderful queer actors, you know, particularly in the ensemble of, of that musical, mm -hmm. How did you? How did that kind of work for you? Because you, I suppose you were going into something that had already been set up to some yeah. extent. Well, again, like I was so new to it. I'd only just, I literally, I left school to go and do that. Uh, and then obviously graduated a couple of weeks after. So it was, um, it was interesting. We rehearsed for two weeks and obviously it was already set. Mm. And again, you know, when you, I think it was so authentic to the individuals that yeah. created the roles that again in those two weeks you know we had to find our bring our own experience and whatever to it which was interesting definitely and i think we found it more definitely through like um previews and stuff but yeah it was um it again it was wonderful and a lot of people watch it and then say oh you can tell that you all love each other and you know you you see it and it, i think sometimes because everyone is so connected it mm. resonates yeah and that's something i've that's something i've noticed with doing the jobs that have been so queer you know it's like a lot of people have said that and it's like the energy like radiates off the stage like it's completely yeah yeah and as well i found again meeting like isaac yeah and ali came to watch and mm. obviously i met her and that was beautiful um i just think it opened up a lot of doors for me again i'm so new in my like um, queer journey and in my gender journey yeah. I've only just really come to terms with like my pronouns and what they are and what I feel comfortable with and mm. you know that's ever changing and gender is a construct so it will be ever changing and when you're in those environments you just see like actually that it is um, and yeah it, it was just wonderful speaking to those people and I think that's actually probably what has helped me a lot and I've created mm. bonds bonds for life and absolutely you know I mean? yeah it's just it's, it's just wonderful honestly it really needs to be i think it should be set in every job you know mm. representation matters yes but poc queer people like you can't do something and not have that and that goes for backstage as well mm. with creative backstage like you need to have someone who people feel comfortable talking to yeah. and if you have a diverse cast you need to have that and i feel like that's definitely something that obviously 
works so well and has done we've been really lucky and privileged that it has been like that yeah you know mm. those kind of jobs definitely i mean one of the things that i've again i've spoken a little bit about before is that this idea the the way that gender is now seen in musical theater mm-hmm. or starting to be seen is so important Oh, yeah. And when I've been researching the book that I'm writing, that I will eventually write, <laughs> um, one of the things that I've been most interested in is looking at non-binary identities and thinking about, um, I mean, p- partly in terms of my own gender, in terms of the fact that I feel more comfortable. I don't know about pronouns yet, but I feel more comfortable thinking of myself as a gay person. Mm-hmm. Um, but also in terms of how fluid things are and how things are allowed to change and even down to the things like any sort of binary like even the binary between good and bad and all these things that kind of are things that have um been at the foundation of musical theater for such a long time and i just love the idea that we are starting to challenge everything Mm -hmm. um how how are you finding it in terms of going into because musical theater is quite gendered isn't it in terms of the way that dance is taught in terms of the way that we think about voices yeah well i feel like we're legally blonde with like our vocals and stuff especially the ensemble we weren't splitting it wasn't like gendered or anything mm. it was like more just where your voice sat which yeah. was actually really refreshing yeah, coming out of college especially because you yes. always separated the boys and the girls um so yeah it was it was really really nice experience we spoke about this though as well mm. like, even in you know when we was at drama school like like even being at college, it was so binary. Yeah. Like, I think I really struggled. And now I look back and I'm like, of course I did. I don't mm. think I realised how binary it was until I did Legally Blonde. Yes. Because I feel like as well, we were never taught some of You're the, not exposed uh, to you're it. You're not exposed to it. And yeah. you're not taught some of the... Like, especially that style of dance, yeah. I feel like is so new and recent. Mm. Like that kind of like Vogue-esque style. It, it was never taught to us, but like... It's mad, like, seeing, looking back and realising why I struggled so much in first year was because I was doing legit songs sung by males, you know, um, sung by, I don't know how to word that, but... um, Cis men. Sung by cis men. Characters. Singing about uh, their love affair, and it was just always just love, and it was just something that, you know... Honey, those songs are still in my rap. She yeah. needs an update. She does. <laughs> I've still got some of mine. I need to get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's like that. And you're just like, God, I just never connected to it. Mm. Never. And it made me feel rubbish because I thought, oh, I'm really bad. Like, I just can't do it. Don't get me wrong that I could do it justice, but it's just it just never felt right. It's like when I was in Legally and we spoke about Aaron White and Lucy went to go down this whole new route. And obviously that is played by a cis man. Mm. And it was this, we spoke about it and she really wanted to maybe like poke fun at like the woke you know like yeah boy like that kind of person (laughs) yeah and we tried it and it was fun and you know like i really enjoyed it but i think for me and on my journey it just didn't really sit right with Mm. me it didn't i just didn't feel great as well for what people might perceive that as and Mm. look at me and i think i spoke to lucy and i'm so grateful for the way she handled it and she just said like if that like we'll scrap that idea and we'll mm. just find something new at the end of the day this show right now is queer so the last mm. thing i would want or to have is to maybe have like a cis white man on stage like straight man like i would love to have whatever and bring whatever to it i don't know how yeah. I, I don't really know how to word that but um in a sense she was so lovely and yeah. we spoke about it and she said mm. we'll find a room and we'll talk about all the different ways Aaron White can be approached and that was so lovely yeah. and I think that yeah. is something that I w- want and slash probably need in, in the future. future stuff I would like I was yeah. so grateful for that mm. we all had so much worried. freedom yeah. and like given with, with that freedom it just brings out the best in everyone I think exactly because you are you're creating that safe space yeah like and I think yeah, it was just so lovely. I'm really grateful for the way she handled that. It's, yeah. it's particularly difficult, I think, with some of those characters that don't kind of have a very big arc in the story because, mm. you know, that's literally in the original. They're literally there just to be, you know, privileged people. That's mm. that's their role. Yeah. So it's interesting trying to find a way to play that, I think. Yeah. when. But also, like, privilege comes in all forms of yep. thing. It, like... Mm just because someone's queer you can still be extremely privileged and in many ways and i think as well like there was no harm in highlighting that yeah and i think 
that was something that was really cool about it. And again, it's like between Elle and Emmett, mm. there's still privilege there. And that's something that like, it was still mm -hmm. really cool. And a lot of people saw and was like, it's really nice to see that you know yeah in different forms because if you are a person who sees yourself as that person you've probably experienced that if you're interested in lgbtq plus representation in musical theatre check out our website www.queermusicals.com for lots more information about musicals with lgbtq plus characters I was going to ask you about when you were growing up and what sort of uh, characters or what sort of things you saw that kind of helped you maybe to see yourself um, in film or television or theatre or were there people that you saw that really influenced you? Annie the Orphan. I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, that girl changed my life. I'm obsessed with her. That is calm. That Honestly. is the first like musical movie like I watched mm. and I Same. literally watched it on repeat. And like, I come from a loving family, but all I wanted to do was be an orphan in America <laughs> with ginger hair. And I literally oh love her so much. Like, she is just amazing. Like, and I feel like that's where I really fell in love with musical theatre. I know that's so random, but that's I not stan random Annie I think forever. Annie. I used to watch it yeah. all the time on video. I don't know why. It was just like, you just wanted to be like Annie's one of the so girls in the or yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all I ever wanted. When I look back now, they say yeah. all I ever wanted to be was yeah. like one of the girl roles. Yeah, I want to be like I want to be like Pepper. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, I would have loved that. But then, cut to like five years later, I've done like, three amateur productions of Oliver <laughs> yeah. and, and the UK tour and production. Oh my god, god, literally. All I wanted to do was Annie. <laughs> That was one of the things, though, because I went to an all-boys school, so we definitely did Oliver. Yeah. Um, no, we love, we love Oliver. Yeah, we do love Oliver, yeah. but... God, I think I was Oliver at school. Yeah, I think we all were. That yeah. Was yeah, that yeah. was everyone's yeah, young MT boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you were giving. But wouldn't it, have, mm, wouldn't it be lovely to be Nanny? Oh. I think that's just... It's, it's that song, Tomorrow, is just so iconic. So yeah. good. Mm. Or you're never fully dressed without a smile. It's my yeah. favourite. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it, it, yes, and it is just calm. That yeah. is so true. That's probably why I loved it. And of course, Miss Hannigan, Easy oh. Street, and, oh you know, those well, sort of numbers. Revel Hallwood, of mm. mm. like, It does make sense, actually, that it is played by that. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Miss Hannigan is in drag. Also, like, she's... how cool would it be if Miss Hannigan was trans? Yeah. Oh, my God. That makes so much sense. There's like, just yeah. You can have so much fun with Story with those line, yeah. Yeah. with all of those roles. I think. Yeah, I think it's coming back next year. So it is well, be there we go. <laughs> I want to be Annie. <laughs> I don't think that would be anything wrong with that. No, actually, nothing. no, no. Yeah, I, that. <laughs> I mean, it is one of those things, isn't it? That I, I I'm just thinking about this now. We were probably obsessed by things like definitely Mary Poppins. Mm, we yeah. definitely uh, used to fly kites around the living room yeah. and that kind Absolutely. of thing. Loves Mary Chitty Bang Bang. Oh yeah. yes, yes. The child catcher, yeah. terrifying, absolutely gave me yeah. nightmares, but camp. It's yeah. it's a, it's funny that, isn't it? How that's uh, that's such a way in for I guess yeah. for I mean I I probably wouldn't have, hmm, I probably did know I was gay at that time actually. I think <laughs> I probably knew quite early, but mm. um it's interesting how those how that those ch children's stories allow us kind of like a way into yeah, yeah and it's weird because i like i always gravitated towards mary poppins annie like n I, n it was yeah, never like that's so true it was never like oh i kind of see myself in bert or like mm. yeah oliver like i i don't know i just like the female characters in musical theater like really resonated with me when mm. i was a child and i don't know why it's just like i don't know i feel like they're just quite powerful I think there's quite a lot written on that actually. A lot of people have written about the idea of being of gay men or gay people being um or queer people in fact being um drawn to the to the big female roles. Yeah. I guess often not always, but often those big female roles were written by queer people. Perhaps that's perhaps that's part of where the uh where the link comes yeah. from, I don't know. I literally but. have no clue, but all I know is that I was obsessed and I have no idea why. But also with like Mary Poppins, like you've got women fighting for their rights and stuff yes. still so it's like you kind of just relate to them a mm, bit more yeah yeah true i mean the sister suffragette jet song is so camp yeah <laughs> we definitely were all we were yeah, all yeah, involved yeah. in that when that was happening in the living room <laughs> yeah i guess i don't know as queer people were probably like 
with men, it's probably something that we see us ourselves less in, maybe. Mm. Yeah. And you know, when you find that powerful, like, woman or you know, feminine energy, I think that's just something as queer people we just relate to. Yeah. And you know, when someone is riding that and being all powerful mm. and like it is, it's just so wonderful to see. It's kind of like why some people love like you know, like drag queens or you know, why we have like our gay icons. Yes. Yeah that feminine energy is just something that we actually probably connect to because yeah. I guess we don't have that, you know, a lot of gay men, I would hope, and queer people don't have that, you know, toxic masculinity. Mm. So actually the femininity is actually something we can connect to and have and not mm -hmm. feel something that we are ashamed of sometimes. Yeah. So I guess maybe that, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. How fascinating to have gone on that little diversion. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the yeah. power of Annie. The power of Annie. <laughs> Maybe I'll get to play Sandy, Stop the dog. <laughs> oh my God, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Do you remember seeing um, queer characters, explicitly queer characters, um, as you were kind of, as you were growing up at all? Um, I, when I was younger, actually, I don't think I ever saw anyone. Mm. Yeah, on the top of my head, I'm going to say no. So that's to all the mm. straight people out there who um, think it's taught. It's not, because mm. I was never around it. Um, I'm actually not even going to lie. It's RuPaul. It's RuPaul. the first... Mm. Like, that's, that not even, that's not even musical theatre. Yeah. Wasn't it? That, I think... When and like, did you start watching RuPaul? Yeah, I remember watching them when I was like 14, but I remember yeah. I used to watch it in secret, even though yeah, my mum's dad wouldn't have cared. But mm. in my head, I thought it was like for over 18s or like yeah. like just something really like yeah but like not musical theater wise couldn't tell you it was always like i suppose the the drag or you know the villains mm. i guess never had anything like everybody's talking about jamie or something no, no. um no. And especially like growing up in dublin like not near the west mm. end so like i've kind of relied on movie musicals yeah and then uh, luckily when i was like a teenager then they started to tour to Dublin but yeah yeah I'm the same up north we literally just didn't have yeah it. that's so crazy isn't it yeah so it was only like movie musicals really because mm. it's very limited actually what goes on tour I've noticed this now because I live in Birmingham now and if I'm looking mm. for things which are actually on in the theatres in Birmingham it's, it's got better but you know it, there was one time where it would be the fan for the opera and mm. then it would be blood brothers oh, and then it would be summer holiday and then it would probably be blood brothers again because that just does, never seems to yeah. <laughs> never seems oh to gosh. die <laughs> um, holiday that's a funny one i remember playing him what was his name uh I played the main guy in that in my Did little um, drum. That's so funny. Uh, I can't remember. I know it was played by Cliff Richard originally, but I yeah. can't remember what the name of the character was. Camp. Yeah. It was Had like, some good songs. It was a camp Cliff Richard. <laughs> Is there any other type of Cliff Richard? Oh, my God. Literally. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Bachelor Boy is a great song. Mm, yes. <laughs> Queer cool. as Folk. But obviously, we mm. were too young when, it, when Queer as Folk was aired, and I only watched Queer as Folk last year in lockdown. Yeah. Um... But then after, I just don't... All I can think of is Drag Race. <laughs> yeah, literally that's all I can think of. And that wasn't until we were like teenagers, so... And even like the most recent things like that I love and I'm obsessed with is like Pose and, you mm. know... Um, it's a sin. It's a sin. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so like even just all the new recent ones like we just didn't, Pose, we just didn't have that. Sin. No. That now, I, but am, then I guess, I've watched them so much, but we just didn't have it. We also didn't have like... Netflix and like, hmm. and there is a lot of new. There's like an LGBT yeah. plus. So you category. kind of did rely on what was on telly, I guess. But yeah, and there was none of it. No, gosh, it's so bizarre, isn't it? Um, it is, and it's really to me, it's really sad because you know I'm a lot older than you are, and it yeah. it makes me yeah, you are a lot older. Ah. <laughs> yeah, elderly, very elderly. No. Um, point and laugh. Everybody point and laugh. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but it you know makes me sad to think that we're still in this same situation where people are growing up and the only thing that they see on television generally speaking is heterosexual people mm. and not that there's anything particularly wrong with being heterosexual some of my best friends are straight but um <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> yeah literally um but bingo that's why we like looked up to those women in musical theater so much mm. yeah because that was the closest thing yeah. That. That yeah probably makes sense yeah. yeah that is it that is it this the thing that is closest to us yeah you know 
Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you're enjoying it, don't forget to subscribe or follow on your favourite podcast service. If you want to follow us on social media, you can follow us on Twitter at Queer Musicals or you can follow me at Dr. James Lovelock. So, Joe, you've got some quite exciting news which has just come out. <laughs> yeah. Can you, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so I'm going into and Juliet and I'm taking over the role of May, which is super wow. exciting. That is the genderqueer role, the uh, Juliet's best friend. Mm. And they have a wonderful art throughout the show where they find a love interest uh, who is someone very close. If you've seen Legally Blonde, you'll probably know. But um, it's going to be so exciting. Mm. Um, and I cannot wait. Like, I just think it could not have come at a better time. Oh, Joe, that's amazing. Thank you. I'm very excited. Way. Directing that works. Play. Cannot wait to come watch. I know, but like, for literally that, like, I, right before I audit, so I did my first audition for mm. Legally. And um, literally after that, I think at Christmas time, I changed my pronouns and i changed my spotlight to non-binary yeah and it was something i was so worried and scared mm. about um just because of my own um uh, like insecurities and like what that may hold for me in jobs wise and you know um and so i'm grateful as well the way lucy handled the Aaron white thing and you know everything else but like i think that right now could not have come at a better time mm. yeah because i think it is so so authentic and you know so important and i feel like i wouldn't even be trying like it's just so yeah. real and i think that's something that i i literally cannot wait it makes me so emotional mm. the thought that i would do that eight times a week because i never thought i would get to that point yeah. i didn't think i would have that yeah. i just didn't see it so it's going to be really beautiful I, I can't wait i can't believe it i still can't believe it mm. i still can't i'm just like wow You'll believe it when I'm in the front row crying. Ah, mm. Especially just even on that platform again, like, you know, just the amount of people that are going to come watch that, children that are going to come watch that and people who haven't experienced that, older people. And, you know, just to see that and actually even just have a glimpse of an understanding of what it is and how that person feels is just, it's a really, it's really important. Which yeah. It's great. And it's how such it's a important. popular show. Yeah. And like... I mean, it's just it's just going to so be exciting. a full moment getting to speak something so true hmm. every night. Yeah, I just I you just you couldn't write it, could you? No, you couldn't. It's well, so you could because they have. Yeah, <laughs> literally. But yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. No, it's great. I I love how they've used "I'm not a girl, not yet a woman" in that in that arc. I guess the good thing about it being pop song is that you can interpret it however yeah. you want. And as well, like, May is just at the start of their journey. Like, mm. they are just, only just coming to terms yeah. with, actually, are they caught in this middle ground or are they more of that? Mm. You know, and I think, again, same as me, I feel like that's kind of where I'm at. But, like, there's also a potentialness of May even wanting to become, to be trans one day. Sure. You know, you can mm. even interpret in so many ways and I think that's just the niceness of it. Yeah. And again, when you quit, when you create, not create, when okay. you create queer shows, mm. you know, you can, I think it's so important, I was speaking to Luke Shepard about it and it was like, it's, I think it's really important that you don't have a set in stone, you know, yeah. uh, thing of what that part is. And I think... Because queer, everyone's yeah. journey and story is different. Mm. Queer people are ever changing, yeah. like gender, sexuality, and I think it's so mm. important. I think that again, it's a very binary way to look at it. Yeah. If you do put, you know, brackets on it. Yeah. And I think that is something that is going to be. It's really cool with everything. Yeah, it's very exciting. So we're thinking about um, where you'd like to go next. What sort of shows? What sort of things would you like to do in the future? Oh, wow. I'd love to do like proper full out dancey show, like mm. energy, like hairspray, like something really like mm. full out. Yeah. Because I just love to dance. Oh. <laughs> you do. And you're I fabulous. Do. Oh, stop. You don't stop. <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, I would love, I've spoke to my agent and I think we really, I've said like I would love to do a lot more queer stuff. Mm. I think yeah. whether that's like uh, to a, you know, 
to a high commercial standard or not like i would love to do like new queer stuff mm. and like new projects i think that would be so fun because i just think as well i think i do well and just resonate more in those spaces yeah. sometimes i struggle also to... even though legally blonde isn't a new musical it was because it was a new production we all created those characters yeah. Yeah. And that was just such a new experience and I'd definitely love to do that again. Yeah, where the fundamental like casting is to be queer yeah. or to have representation, I think it's just so nice. Yeah, I think so. I think because queer love is so different, isn't it, to... Yeah, to exactly. um I mean... I did have a girlfriend many years ago, mm -hmm. you know, before oh, I cast on. Yes. Fun club. But it's, <laughs> there's a very, even just from the sense of, you know, we feel with a girlfriend, you can hold hands in public. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, there's no pressure on you yeah. and, and all of those sorts of things. And I, I, you know, I sort of, I respect when people say love is love is love and all that sort of thing. But there's also part of me that goes, well, actually, it's not the same. There's some yeah. really big differences uh, still about, you know, falling yeah. in love. Uh, in, you know if it's a queer relationship Completely. and uh, yeah i kind of wish there were more songs about that really definitely i think that would be lovely to like mm. dig into wouldn't it? i don't want to think about girls anymore yeah <laughs> literally but yeah it'd just be so cool i reckon like just to yeah yeah it's one of the things i've noticed is how few love duets there are between two between two people two people in a queer relationship where they're both in the same room, not just singing about each other, oh. singing to each other. And it's really difficult. It's really difficult to find any of, even in sort of really queer musicals, it's very yeah. difficult to find those sorts of duets. So yeah. hopefully people will want to write those sorts of things yeah. for well, people like lovely. you. Yeah, like yes. Ali at the minute who's doing Happy Meal. That mm. is by two trans actors and it is so authentic. And I think there's like sex scenes in it. Mm. There's like... There's so much like realness and it's written by a trans person. And it's like, even that, I, mm. when, they, when she told me that, I was just so happy for her because that yeah. is going to be just like, oh my gosh, imagine. It's beautiful. Someone, imagine if I just see, I go now, if I was to sit there when I was younger and see that, yeah. I'd be like, wow, cool. It's so special. So special. So I'm really happy for her. Absolutely. And I think people like yourselves as well, are for, you know, bringing those sorts of stories and being being happy to kind of put yourself so much into those roles is really important. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for joining me today. Aww. It's been lovely to speak to you both. Thanks for having us. I know. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for listening at home and I'll see you next time. 